color varies with different monitors unless you are very careful. Therefore, it is unlikely that the colors you see are the same as we saw while this video was being shot. Color has become ubiquitous in all computer applications, but users and clients are often unhappy with the aesthetics of the final product. One reason is that the current color selection tools allow users to pick only one color at a time. There is no relationship between the colors other than what is visible in the image being created. In the past, users drew the shapes of the objects in their pictures with an illustrator. Then they used a binder with charts like these. They picked the colors one by one, looked up the signals that produced the color, and entered the signal specification in the computer using a tool like this one. While the color shown in the tool was similar, it did not match accurately the one on the print. Picking colors directly with the color tool required a great deal of experience. Colors chosen this way were often surprisingly different when printed. To tackle this problem, let us partition images into two classes. The first consists of those using reference colors. The second consists of those using functional colors. A reference color is a color that is associated with an object in the human perceptual world. Examples are the colors of skin, grass, or the sky. A functional color has purely symbolic function and does not have a connection to objects in the real world. Examples are the colors used in thematic maps or in business graphics. In the case of functional colors, we simply want color sets that are aesthetically pleasing, that is, the colors should harmonize. In the case of reference colors, we also want accuracy to facilitate the identification of objects in the picture. Rather than a large monolithic color selection tool trying to solve all problems at the cost of a complex user interface, we propose a small suite of simple tools. Let us first examine the color selection problem for functional colors. The central idea is to let the user operate on whole palettes instead of single colors at a time. A further important point is the methodology. Our tools encourage the user to work first on the colors and then on the shapes. This way, users have a better chance of obtaining pleasing colors. The first tool, called ProtoPalette, assists the user in putting together a palette. Hardware vendors stress the number of colors their systems can display and talk about millions. However, a typical illustration requires only about a dozen colors. The purpose of the Proto Palette is to restrict the available colors so that they go well together. To go well together is still a fuzzy concept. For the time, we avail ourselves of the color theories known in the graphical and pictorial arts. The implemented algorithms are simple adaptations of these theories. In this sense, the tool automatically generates harmonious colors. The user starts by specifying the most important color called the key color. Let's take yellow for this demo. If we need more colors for related but different objects, we can ask the tool for a so-called analogous harmony centered around the key color. Let's see what this means. Internally, the proto palette is based on a perceptually uniform color space. That is, the distance between two color points in this space is proportional to the perceived difference between the two points. This space is defined so that in cylindrical coordinates, the angle defines the color's hue, the distance from the center defines the color's chroma, and the height defines the color's lightness. The generated harmonious colors are symmetries in this color space. Asking for an analogous harmony produces four additional colors spaced uniformly around the key color. Colors not needed for the particular illustration are simply deleted. For contrasting objects, one or two complementary colors can be requested. In the first case, ProtoPalette produces the direct complement by incrementing the hue angle 180 degrees. In the second case, the two triadic complements, that is, the hues at plus and minus 120 degrees, are generated. If we need variations on one of these hues, we can do this by requesting lightness variations and deleting the unneeded ones. Finally, we can add chroma variations, typically used to confer depth to the picture, since vivid colors are perceived to stand in front of duller colors. When we are done, we can examine our palette and vary the key color. Note how the whole palette tracks the change of the key color. A casual user, for instance a physicist drawing a graph, may find it too cumbersome to design a palette for every task. Or, in sophisticated applications where the choice of colors is crucial to the design, the creation of palettes might be assigned to a specially trained person. For these reasons, we have designed a color palette database. The database contains a set of carefully prepared palettes, as well as the user's own palettes. The digital palette provides an elementary interface to this database and also provides a way to include reference colors in the palettes. When you want to draw a reference object, such as a flamingo, a precise specification of a reference color is difficult to generate from memory. An easy way to determine a reference color is to get a hold of the reference object and start by measuring its color. Once we have the color's colorimetric data, 
it must be represented in a device-independent color system. By device-independent color, we mean color that is specified by way of physical measurement. Each device handler is calibrated to generate signals, for example, red, green, and blue, such that when the displayed or printed color is measured, the specified color is matched. There are several standards based on device-independent color specification, such as the Xerox Color Encoding Standard or the ISO ODA Color Addendum. Our tools are implemented using the Xerox Color Encoding Standard. Unfortunately, the video equipment is not within this calibrated loop. This is why you do not see the same colors as we do. Matching a color by mixing paints requires skill. In the Flamingo case, the artist mixes China White with Vermilion. Here's how we do it. We measure the object or use a standard color atlas of known color values, such as the Munsell Book of Colors or the OSA color charts, to determine which sample comes closest to the object of interest. We can then add this value to our digital palette. Starting with the correct colors is like having a special color box for every application. Here we see some palettes. In a sophisticated illustration, we need fine variations on the basic colors. Like the wash we saw in the paint palette, we create a digital wash in our color tool. We can select two colors, and the tool now displays all intermediate colors. We can pick one by selecting it. As you see, it is added in front of the palette. If we do not like it, we can simply delete it and make another selection. The wash is generated by interpolating linearly between the two colors in the perceptually uniform color space shown earlier. Successive interpolation, or mixing, can be used to generate difficult to determine colors, such as skin tones. First, we select two extremal colors. Now we select the best interpolation. Since it is not yet close enough, we simply iterate the process by making a new wash using the new color as one of the endpoints. Remember that on your video, these colors may not look at all like skin tones because the equipment is not calibrated. Let's bring up the palette we created earlier with the Proto Palette. Here we can use the wash to create all intermediate lightness values of a color. By selecting the darkest and the lightest value, we obtain a wash containing all possible values of the color. In summary, we have one tool for automatically generating and selecting harmonious functional colors, the Proto Palette, and one tool, the Digital Palette, that adds reference colors and offers the ability to blend colors. To avoid device dependencies, the tools are based on the Xerox Color Encoding Standard. We perform all computations on color in a perceptually uniform color space to make the user interface as smooth as possible. We did all of this before invoking the Illustrator because we want to work first on the colors and then on the shapes. In certain applications, a tighter control of color is necessary. So we have implemented a touch-up tool for the expert user, the Meta Palette. Suppose that both color and form have been determined and the illustration is almost ready, but a specialist wants to tweak the colors for a specific application. We use the metaphor of applying turpentine to the illustration so that the colors can be adjusted. After typing the turpentine command for the illustration, it is displayed in color. We can edit lightness, hue, and chroma for each color in the illustration. We said earlier that these color selection tools are based on the Xerox color encoding standard so that they are device independent. In the real world, not all devices are calibrated. For such devices, we can perform a very rough approximation of the calibration by rendering half a dozen colors and measuring them with a colorimeter. While not accurate enough to qualify for true device independent color reproduction, it can prove useful for color selection. This approximation also gives us the ability to roughly predict how the illustration will look on a particular device. Here we see it for an electrostatic plotter, a thermal transfer printer, an offset press, and a variety of color monitors. The simulation is based only on a very rough linear interpolation, but it gives a handle on the final appearance of the illustration. By switching between different devices, the user gets just a hint of how the colors can change from device to device. You have now seen most of our color selection environment. We have shown that we first select colors and then define shapes. We work on palettes instead of single colors. We use a set of simple tools instead of a large, complex catch-all application. For functional colors, we use a tool based on standard principles in the graphic arts, namely color theory. For reference colors, we use a database of palettes obtained by visual matching and measurement. If a final touch-up is necessary, all the colors in an illustration can be adjusted by manipulating points in a color space and all tools are based on a device-independent color encoding standard.